Roughly a month ago now, I compared the Radeon RX 9070 XT and GeForce RTX 5070 Ti head-to-head in 55 games. Now, overall, the Radeon GPU was 5% slower, but based on the MSRP, it should cost at least 20% less, and looking at real-world pricing and availability at the time, it was 17% cheaper. Now, I noted at the time that the 9070 XT is technically meant to be priced to compete with the RTX 5070, so the non TI model, but I was personally more interested in seeing how it stacked up against the faster TI model. So that is the comparison that I started with. Predictably though, some people were upset with that decision, but as I promised, I am now getting around to benchmarking and comparing the 9070 XT and RTX 5070 in a big benchmark. But before I do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and the new Duranaut High Performance Thermal Paste. Duranaut offers extreme long-term stability combined with outstanding thermal conductivity, and this has been achieved through a specially engineered silicon oil combined with aluminium microparticles and zinc oxide nanoparticles of various shapes. Duranaut isn't electrically conductive and won't harden over time. For best performance, you'll want to apply a very thin layer, and to help with this included is the TG Spatula Pro. The spatula's revised design allows for increased pressure during application, making it easy to spread a thin, even layer of Duranaut. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so since the previous 55 game benchmark, both AMD and Nvidia have released multiple driver updates, which have addressed some of the performance related issues that we saw in that previous testing. On top of that, pricing has changed quite a bit, at least for the GeForce GPUs, which are now heading down towards the advertised MSRP. The RTX 5070 Ti, for example, is down at $825 US, and the non-TI model, $610 US. And there are multiple versions available. In contrast, a brand new in-stock 9070 XT is currently priced at $860 US making it considerably more expensive than the RTX 5070, 41% more expensive in fact. Now that's pretty crazy, and it means you're also looking at a 4% premium over the 5070 Ti, despite being 5% slower on average with an inferior feature set. However, in Germany, the 9070 XT costs 745 euros, making it 11% cheaper than the 5070 Ti, but 26% more expensive than the 5070. So better than what we see in the US, but still the 9070 XT should be at least 20% cheaper than the 5070 Ti and just 10% more expensive than the 5070. Canadian pricing sees the 9070 XT coming in at $1,100, which is 12% cheaper than the 5070 Ti, but also 34% more than the RTX 5070. Then here in Australia, both the 5070 and 5070 Ti can be had at the local MSRP, known as the RRP, and that means priced at 1300 Australian dollars, the 9070 XT costs 14% less than the 5070 Ti, but 18% more than the 5070. In short, that means in the US, the 9070 XT costs 41% more than the 5070, 34% more in Canada, 26% more in Germany, and 18% more in Australia. So then, when armed with the latest drivers, how much faster is the 9070 XT than the RTX 5070? Well, we're about to find out with a massive 57 game benchmark covering the 1440p and 4K resolutions, but please note, we're not going to go over all of the individual game data, as that would take a very long time to do. Rather, I'm going to break down all of that in a single large comparison graph. But first we will check out the results for about a dozen titles. Since our previous testing, the performance of the 9070 XT has improved by 14% at 1440p and 9% at 4K in Black Ops 6, allowing the Radeon GPU to provide a massive performance advantage over not just the RTX 5070, but also the 5070 Ti. We're talking about a 68% increase at 1440p and 70% at 4K when compared to the 5070. Sadly, however, performance has only improved by a few frames in Hunt Showdown 1896, and as a result, the 9070 XT is much slower than even the RTX 5070, trailing by a 12% margin at 1440p and 18% at 4K. And please note we are testing using the maximum in-game quality settings, at the native resolution. 
The latest GeForce driver has improved performance in Rocket League, and now the 5070 Ti is 12% faster than the 9070 XT, with similar performance seen at 4K. When compared to the standard 5070, the 9070 XT is 14% faster at 1440p and 31% faster at 4K. The newer GeForce driver also addresses the performance issues we've been seeing in Space Marine 2. That said, the Radeon performance has also improved a little bit, and as a result the 9070XT is just 7% faster than the RTX 5070 at 1440p, and then 10% faster at 4K. Performance has also improved in ACC for the 9070XT with the newer driver, but even so, the 5070Ti is still much faster, and in fact, the 9070XT is only able to match the 5070 at 4K, while it ended up about 9% slower at 1440p. Next up we have The Last of Us Part 1, and here the 9070XT was 24% faster than the RTX 5070 at 1440p, and then 37% faster at 4K. So a strong result here for AMD, as the 9070XT was faster than even the TI model. Moving on to Starfield, the 9070XT is particularly impressive here, beating the 5070Ti at both tester resolutions, and that meant it was 31% faster than the 5070 at 1440p, and 36% faster at 4K, so a very easy win here for AMD. Now, for testing Grand Theft Auto V Enhanced, please note we're using the maximum RT quality preset with scaling disabled. So this is native resolution testing. If you simply enable the preset, resolution scaling will be enabled by default, and your FPS will be higher as a result. The 9070 XT doesn't perform that well relative to the GeForce GPUs here, and as a result it was 5% slower than the RTX 5070 at 1440p, though it was 2% faster at 4K. Next up we have Marvel Rivals, and here the 9070 XT sits between the 5070 and 5070 Ti, making it 14% faster than the 5070 at 1440p and 4K. So good performance relative to the 5070, though it is a little bit weak when compared to the Ti model. The 9070 XT is very impressive in Horizon Forbidden West, comfortably beating the RTX 5070 Ti, making it 34% faster than the 5070 at 1440p, and 40% faster at 4K with 80 FPS on average. Oblivion Remastered also plays well on the 9070 XT, rendering 69 FPS at 1440p to beat the RTX 5070 by a 30% margin, and then 44 FPS on average at 4K meant that it was 38% faster. For testing Cyberpunk 2077, we're using the high preset, but with upscaling disabled, so this is native resolution performance, and this led to the 9070 XT delivering 25% greater performance when compared to the RTX 5070 at 1440p, and then 27% better performance at 4K. Claire Obscure Expedition 33 is one of the newest games included in this test, and here the 9070 XT roughly matched the 5070 Ti making it 24% faster than the RTX 5070 at 1440p and 21% faster at 4K. The 9070 XT also performs well in Monster Hunter Wilds, delivering 25% greater performance than the RTX 5070 at 1440p and 20% greater performance at 4K. So comfortably a performance tier above what should be the similarly priced RTX 5070. Okay, so at 1440p, across the 57 games tested, the 9070 XT was on average 17% faster than the RTX 5070, which would be impressive if both cards were available at their respected MSRPs, given the Radeon GPU should cost just 9% more. However, here in Australia, it does cost 18% more, and pricing in other key regions sees it more like 30 to 40% more expensive, meaning currently the 9070 XT is very poor value. The 4K data is only slightly more favourable, 21% faster average when compared to the RTX 5070, but again here in Australia it costs 18% more, and when compared to other regions such as Canada, Germany and the US, the 9070 XT costs considerably more than the RTX 5070. Okay, so let's see how the value of the 9070 XT compares with the RTX 5070 across four different regions. Here in Australia, the 9070 XT manages to be worse value than the RTX 5070, albeit by just a few percent, so really in terms of value, they are much the same. 
The 9070 XT has the advantage of more VRAM, but the 5070 has DLSS 4, which is superior to FSR 4, mostly due to its widespread adoption. However, looking at Germany, the 9070 XT ends up 9% worse in terms of value, and we're looking at a complete blowout in Canada and the US, where the Radeon GPU is 16-22% to worse in terms of value, making it a complete write-off in those countries. Then, when compared with the RTX 5070 Ti, the 9070 XT is even less compelling right now in my opinion. Current pricing means it's offering just 9% better value in terms of cost per frame here in Australia, 6% better in Germany, 7% better in Canada, and incredibly it's actually 10% worse value in the US. But even in the regions where the 5070 Ti is offering better cost per frame value, we're talking about single digits where it should be at least 20% better value. You have to wonder, are GeForce owners really going to switch to Radeon for less than a 10% saving? We already know the answer to that, so if pricing and availability continues like this, Radeon sales are going to slow up really fast. So there you have it. As it stands, across a wide range of games, the 9070 XT is around 20% faster than the RTX 5070, so it really is a performance tier above, which would be great news for AMD if both of these products were available at the MSRP, but of course they're not. If they were though, the 9070 XT would cost just 10% more, but as we just saw, it'd be offering around 20% more performance. That's a pretty clear win for AMD. And you could easily ignore the features of the GeForce GPU, such as the superior upscaling support and better RT performance, mostly because the latter is negated by a lack of VRAM. 12 gigabytes just isn't enough for the RTX 5070, and I expect this will become extremely evident over the next few years. However, as we just saw, AMD has been unable to honor their MSRP, something we suggested would be the case in our day one review, when we broke the news that they were heavily subsidizing the first few batches of product to enable the claimed MSRP, or at least make it look like they were going to meet the MSRP. But partners were telling us the real MSRP for multiple models was going to be much higher. And in fact, this is what I said in my review. Okay, so I'm going to stand for this bit because I'm not really sure how real the $600 US MSRP is. And this is because I've done some digging around, and it sounds like while there will be some stock available at the MSRP, in order to achieve this, AMD is providing retailers a $50 US rebate. This is sort of a temporary thing, or it could be, and this suggests that the price was intended to be at least $650 US. That's ultimately what AMD want for this product. But at least for now, AMD are subsidizing some models so they can hit that $600 US MSRP, but it's going to be... I imagine, in limited numbers. XFX, for example, have told me that the 9070 Mercury, the model we featured in this video, this guy right here, this one won't be selling at the $650 US MSRP. Won't even cost $700. Rather, the actual MSRP from XFX for this one is a whopping $770 US. And on shelf pricing for the US, because of tariffs and all that fun stuff, it's expected to be $850 US, so that's a bit tragic if true. Now, based on the information I have been able to gather, it does sound as though AMD is starting to play the game. That is, of course, NVIDIA's game. So this means the $600 US MSRP might not really be a thing beyond sort of the initial very limited supply of MSRP models. And that leaves everything else well above $600. And restocks of those MSRP models, let's say, are expected to be few and far between. So with the tariffs, we're expecting the real US price to be $850 US, and this was based on information we gathered from multiple sources ahead of the release. Today, two months after the release, the cheapest 9070 XT costs $860 US, so pretty close to what we were told would be the real on-shelf price. And that's bad news for AMD, because Nvidia is somehow doing better on pricing, and we just saw that in the US, the RTX 5070 is considerably better value right now. And even the TI version is offering a better cost per frame. Of course, it does depend on the region. Here in Australia, the RTX 5070 and 9070 XT offer the same level of value 
when comparing cost per frame. So that being the case, I would recommend the Radeon GPU, purely because it does have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which we consider to be the minimum for a GPU priced over $400 US in 2025. Having said all of that though, the RX 9070, that's almost 20% cheaper. And that being the case, that is the GPU I would recommend you buy right now if you're in Australia. However, this doesn't apply to the other regions we're looking at. Remarkably, right now, the GeForce GPUs are better value choices in Germany, Canada, and the US. In Canada, the vanilla RTX 5070 is offering a 20% discount per frame when compared to the TI model, which certainly makes it a viable option, though I am hesitant to recommend an $820 Canadian GPU with just 12 gigabytes of VRAM, especially if you plan on playing the latest and greatest games with the highest possible quality settings, while also trying to utilize technologies such as ray tracing and or frame generation. So there you have it, after a very promising launch that was backed up by amazing initial availability and pricing, thanks to months of built up inventory that AMD subsidized to lower the price, awarding them stellar reviews and extreme hype from consumers. Two months later though, the 9070 series has boiled down to a lackluster release, at least based on the current pricing. Crucially, however, this doesn't seem to be affecting sales just yet, at least not based on the information that we've been able to obtain. So thanks to all that initial hype, the 9070 XT is still selling really well. Uh, locally, it is selling much better than the 5070 Ti, that much I have been able to confirm. The issue for AMD right now really is supply, which is why the pricing has remained high, because high demand and low supply, all that supply and demand shenanigans. But as it stands right now, for the majority of you, the RTX 5070 Ti is going to be the better buy, which is pretty crazy after all of this, and it's why I'm recommending it over the 9070 XT right now. And with that, I'm going to end this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Uh, subscribe for more content. We will keep you updated with GPU pricing monthly as things no doubt will continue to change. Uh, and also we do have the join button or Patreon if you want to get more Harbour Unbox goodness there. Monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content and our exclusive Discord server. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.